When I started out photography, for a reason, I had the preconceived notion that prime lens is good, zoom lens is bad. I believe that the larger the aperture, the better the lens. In the beginning, I shot everything with my Canon EF 50mm f1.8 because, you know, 50mm is quite versatile if you know how to use it properly and the 1.8 aperture gives a lot of options. However, when I switched from Canon to Fuji, things started to change. I started to develop my skills. I needed more from my gear. I needed more options, more versatility, but I didn't want to increase the size of my gear. The sole reason for switching from Canon to Fuji was because the prospect of lugging the behemoth that is the 5D Mark IV always put me off ever taking it out of the house. I thought downsizing the camera body to the nimble X-T3 would solve the form factor problem presented by the 5D. But then I was faced with another problem. I bought the Fujinon 35mm f2 because I still believe that prime lens good, zoom lens bad. But I then started to create more and more videos on YouTube and Instagram. I realized that a prime lens just doesn't cut it. When it comes to solo run and gun shooting, which is basically what you're forced into when you have no budget for studios and no additional help. In the beginning, I honed my skills by shooting out on the streets of London and in my local gym, basically wherever I could take my camera for free, where having to be quick and discreet is a must for fear of being kicked out for filming. For example, one shot I'd want to get the whole thing in frame, but that would require backing up so far, squishing myself into a corner, and then the very next shot I'd want to punch in on a certain detail. With a prime lens, this is near impossible when you have limited space and time. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Eventually, I finally dared to break my rule of prime lens good, zoom lens bad. And I'm bloody glad I did because it led me to this lens. The Fujinon 18-55mm f2.8 f4. Probably the least exciting lens from the large selection of Fuji lenses on offer. The 18-55mm. Not only is this a zoom lens, it's the kit lens. Kit lenses typically have a bad reputation for being lackluster. Poorly made with subpar optics, you wouldn't see a pro anywhere near a kit lens. Out of all the Fuji zoom lenses, why did I pick the kit lens to be my main driver? Why not one of the pro zoom lenses? And why, even after three years of using the X-T3, is the 18-55mm still my favorite Fuji lens and the one I use 90% of the time? Is this lens perfect? Of course not. I'll share some of my gripes about this lens at the end. I replaced my prime lens for a zoom lens for two reasons. Speed and convenience. The nature of my work changed drastically. I started to shoot a lot more video on top of photos. Most of the time, to make a video interesting, you need to shoot multiple angles. Typically a wide establishing shot, a medium shot, close-ups of important details. Now this is of course completely doable with a prime lens. However, I'm a solo shooter and most of the time I'm given limited time and space to work, which made a prime lens really restricting. Whereas with this lens, I can get all three shots really quickly and effortlessly. Getting a variety of shots effortlessly became more important than getting a blurry background with my previous 50mm f1.8. Shooting YouTube videos outside means I often travel by bike to various locations, meaning I don't want to carry a tripod and I'll go completely handheld, which means image stabilization is a must. Whilst the optical image stabilization on the 18 55 is not gonna set the world on fire, it more than gets the job done in smoothing out any micro jitters. I can even get some like short gimbal-like shots when I shoot slow motion. Having OIS means I can get more done with less gear and less effort, which is very important to me. One of my rules now is the less gear, the better. And so far, with that roughly 24 to 85 mil full frame equivalent and OIS, this lens does the job of a 24, 35, 50, 85, and a gimbal all in one small compact body that fits in my tiny backpack. Oh, lovely. The thing that really sealed the deal for me was the price. 
I managed to find this lens brand new on eBay for less than £300, which is nearly half the price of retail. I know some people are a bit iffy about eBay, but if you know what you're doing, it's completely fine. Not only was this lens going to be my workhorse lens, it was one of the cheapest modern lenses I've bought. Now, all of these things would not matter if the images it produced were substandard. Is it any good? Without question. I'm always amazed by the way it renders images. It's nowhere near as sharp as my Fujinon 35mm f2, but that doesn't matter at all because I permanently have a ProMist filter attached, which softens the image anyway. The autofocus is also second to none, especially paired with Fuji's ever improving face eye detection. It's reliable, it racks focus so smoothly, there's nothing to complain about here. So often I brought a slew of gear to a shoot and ended up using only the XC3 and the 85mm and nothing else. I've learned that so long as I have sufficient light, I can create a complete project of stills and video with nothing but this combo. The biggest compliment I've ever got for my work was when I did a video for a men's magazine and one of the guys from the shoot couldn't believe I produced it with nothing but this dinky little setup. Just one lens and one body. Now, could this lens be better? Sure, it could have weather sealing, but I rarely shoot in the rain. It would be nice if it had a larger constant aperture. The variable aperture does get annoying in low light situations because you're forced to shoot at 18 mil to make full use of the widest aperture of f2.8. You also have to forego creamy, creamy bokeh. With a 2.8 max aperture at the wide end, you're never going to get great background blur. However, you can get acceptable background blur zoomed out at 55 mil and at f4. The lens is really well built and feels really premium. You know, the outer case is metal, but that premium well-built feeling ends when you fully extend the lens. You reveal the plastic inner barrel, which could be disappointing for some, but bear in mind, that also makes this lens cheaper and lighter. Look, the Fuji 50mm f1.0 is a Victoria's Secret model. It'll turn heads with that enormous large front element. Woo! It'll make any location, any subject look beautiful just by being there. The f1.0 aperture will make anyone swoon at the sight of its creamy brokenness. But it also costs a bum. And it's also a total pain in the ass to work with. Much like a Victoria's Secret supermodel, I imagine. The 80 to 55 mil, on the other hand, is your reliable local handyman that will work in any setting, on any day of the week. No matter the job, it'll get it done. The 18 to 5 mil will work harder and produce a wider variety of work than the 50 mil f1.0, which to me makes this lens far more appealing. If I were allowed to only own one lens for my X-T3, I wouldn't hesitate in choosing the 18 to 55 mil f2.8 f4. Not because it's the best lens, not even. There are lenses with better optics, larger apertures, better performance, but for the sole reason that it always gets the job done. Lastly, thank you to Sandmark for sending over this little RGB LED light. It came in super useful for making all these little macro product shots. If you want to support the channel, there is an affiliate link in the description. As always, follow me on Instagram at ZaneReasonPhoto. Lately, I've been dropping reel after reel. They're so much fun. So if you want more content and you want to find more ways to procrastinate, then I highly recommend you check them out. That's all for me, guys. Keep learning. Keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.